All right. So I'm here with Greg Terry. Yesterday I was watching Greg and Pete. It was the most heartwarming uh, video that I think I've seen in, in months. Uh, so uh, Greg was providing Pete with much needed uh, equipment. They were talking about how, how much did you actually, uh, what was it? One, it was north of 170. Uh, how much are we actually at as of last night? Um, as of last night, well, I can give you as of today, uh, uh, this morning, us time, I, I got the updated amount that we raised another, we were at 177 last night right? and another 11 came in. We're at 188 now. Yeah. yeah and yeah, it's crazy. And, you know, we're just going to keep pushing hard because like we said last night, I, I'm not going to be able to tell people, okay, well, you're the, you're the golden apple here with the 200,000 mm -hmm. dollar. Um, and if we go, go north of it, which we are, we'll either add another vehicle or we'll do any, I mean, we're, we're rolling guys, but yeah. for now, you know, our commitment is to raise that 200, but if we go beyond it, it's going to stay in the same project until we initiate another project. Yeah. I was thinking about how, um, how pathetic my, so I wasn't doing any fundraising before we had gotten together. And I, I just, I don't feel like this is in my skill set. but I was thinking about how, how terrible it would be if I was just doing this on my own saying, cause I've had links to Samaritan's purse and United 24 on, mm -hmm. on every video. Well, no, I had since some Samaritan's purse since the very beginning. And then I added United 24 shortly thereafter. And I, you know, just if people wanted to do that, but I, I don't feel like I have any skill set or facility in doing this. And so it wasn't until uh, you came along where I was like, okay, let's, I'm going to work with this guy and we're going to make mm -hmm. sure this stuff gets going. But I was thinking how pathetic my fundraising attempts would have been on my own. But, and, and, and even in the first uh, iteration of this at Christmas, there was only like four of us or something like that. And now we've almost doubled the number of communities mm -hmm. that are working together on this. Yes. And so it's, it's pretty incredible to watch. And there's, there's a real strength in unity. There is. And, you know, at, it, it started with that little thought you had that there was pent up demand and putting on the Christmas hat. And you remember we were hoping to raise five or $10,000 and we raised uh, almost $80,000 worth of Amazon medical supplies of which, you know, we dropped $56,000 worth of aid on the, on our uh, on our adopted battalion. Mm -hmm. um, but today, guys, we were right down near one of the hottest battles in the entire war. Mm -hmm. Can't give you the location. Inside the ambulance vehicle that they use for wounded heroes, not one of the ones we're buying. This is a different group we're helping as well. And we loaded them up. And you guys will be seeing all of this. Now, for security and OPSEC, we have to delay mm -hmm. how I drop videos because we're so close to the front. I just up the road here just was doing another drop here in the night. We've literally been dropping aid all day long. And it's it, it's just mind-blowing. So, it, yeah, it started with your, your concept there. And then... Rick got involved and Johnny Pierce got involved. Mm -hmm. So that was basically us four. But then what happened? Next thing you know, Warthog giving us a shout mm -hmm. out and helping us multiple times. And um, uh, the shills with Dick Dawson. Mm -hmm. uh, Starsky now, he's already communicated with me. I want to get involved with this. Mm -hmm. I have done some cooperative things with uh, Andrew Mercado and, mm -hmm. and he has helped push this. So it's just beautiful to see communities come together and focus on what we have in common versus what is different among us. Yeah. Tell, tell that's us the more. power. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, you have to, you have to focus on what, what do we have in common? Uh, tell us about what we, uh, what, what was just dropped today? Like what kind of materials uh, support was, was given? Uh, just give us that kind of update. Okay. So, uh, you know, we've had these battery initiatives um, that just, appeared as we <laughs> run the front lines we found that find out the most important needs and we um discovered that this batteries and and like metal detectors are so important because these guys are having to stay in their frontline positions for mm -hmm. so long right. because it is too dangerous to get them out and i'm not talking about wounded i'm talking about even rotations and you know i was talking to a commander last night and 
it, it's the danger is so high that even with all the equipment, they literally are having to move only in certain weather conditions. Mm -hmm. and, and the most important one being fog. They're waiting for the fog to make transitions and to move and to do extractions right. and to rotate troops. So these guys are having to stay on positions much longer than their schedule, meaning their batteries run out. So these batteries are massive. We dropped a ton of these batteries today. We dropped medical supplies. We dropped uh, socks and thermals. It's still freezing cold here. You can see, well, I'm in the dark now, but I'm, we're, we're geared up. It's, it's very cold here, windy. It's wet um so it just it's just miserable weather wise so it's still cold and uh, tourniquets chest seals all the things that were on our list all of those things and actually we were just dropping some radios to a different group so we've had like five drops today mm -hmm. in one day this is rolling all day and we're still rolling but the group we just dropped not this group the group before last we dropped um some new radios to with the batteries and the antennas and all of this stuff because they're having to stay on position so long. They, this is how it works, Dr. Dr. Gertis. So we're sitting there with a guy we have a relationship with. We've helped him a lot. And he looks at Jania and goes, are you guys um, going to be going south any? And and we are, because right now we're in the east. We're in the Donetsk Oblast, okay? That's where we're at. And uh, he's, he said, are you going south any? Jania says, yeah, we haven't even got south yet. This is a huge run. And, the, and this is what the guy said. We have a severe tourniquet shortage on the Southern Front mm -hmm. with our group. Severe. That's his words, not mine. And this would be down toward the hot battles on the Zaporizhia line, for example, like Robotny, mm -hmm. and down towards uh, Krakowa, all of those things. So this is a need now that pops back up on us yeah. but do now we still have a supply of tourniquets but we've dropped <laughs> hundreds and hundreds and hundreds mm -hmm. but this is something that if we now are running out of our supply we have a supplier inside ukraine and because people have been so generous with their finances yeah. and say like right now we're saying okay everybody unless you mark it differently the the money's going for the armored project vehicle mm -hmm. project and when we hit that number we will then start another project, um, but many. But unless you have something you want to specifically donate for, please mark it, yeah. and it will always go to that. But if in general it's going to armored vehicles, and and this is working perfectly now, but we've had a lot of people donate general before the project started, mm -hmm. so those monies are still allocated general, mm -hmm. and that means we can walk to the supplier. Well, not walk, drive up to the supplier here. Uh, one of which would be in the city of Nipro. And we can get the high quality, high level tourniquets that are uh, wonderful. So you have the Cat 7 Genuines, and now Ukraine also has their version uh, similar to a Cat 7. It's called a Siege and completely uh, approved by every medic on the front line. They said, if we can't get a Cat 7, please get us a Siege. So we can go buy those hand over fist. So we discover that being over here in the East. Now it's already, Zhang is already working on it. He's already working on it. Yeah. And we now will be dropping for sure tourniquets on the South somewhere in the next few days. That's, that's how it works. Yeah. It's, it's somewhat mind boggling. Like I, it's hard to, you can't quantify it, but how many people will survive because of all that this, that has gone into this, like because of the tourniquets and bandages and, and all the other materials that are being dropped. I mean, it's, it's doing a world of good. And like people saw that vision early on in the Christmas fundraiser and were like, yeah, I want to give, and they would specifically give to, I want, you know, I, I'm buying X number of tourniquets or whatever it is. So, um, mm -hmm. and, and you now have some flexibility and you now know exactly what they need because they're telling you. So, so that's that's pretty significant. You were talking about the weather earlier. When does the weather shift, and what will that do? I mean, will that uh, speed up the the momentum? Because it seems like, from what I can tell, it's not that the tempo. It's not like the fighting has stopped, but just statistically, the tempo seems to have dropped a little bit compared to so the election. I, I can tell you right now um, that on the northeast side of the front line. Mm -hmm. And that would not include, that would be above Sivirsk. Let's just say that, above okay. Sivirsk. And people know the map. Um, that is stable. Mm 
Mm-hmm. So that would be Kupiansk. Mm-hmm. Um, if you go up on Sumy and Chernigiv, a lot of DRG activity and a lot of glide bombs. It's yeah, not yeah. being reported. Yeah, that's, that's the big a, menace, right? A lot of glide bombs. Okay. Uh, now, once you get below Siv- Sivirsk, you come down to that Chasivyar, Bakhmut, mm-hmm. um, down past Avdivka and down past Marinka before the line turns for the southern line. That is not no, not that's being best. blown into oblivion, right? I mean, that's that's the uh, artillery shell, right? Are you kidding me? It, it's 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 unbelievable. So we were in some areas today um, that would be very close to the Chasivyar area, very, very, very close. Mm-hmm. And I've ridden past these places so many times over the two years of us running aid on the front lines. Mm-hmm. And to be quite honest, I could not even recognize the places now. Wow, that's amazing. They're 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 being leveled. Building well, and that, and that is building the Russian way of warfare, right? I mean, it's just yes. go in and destroy everything and then reclaim this rubble. Yeah. Um, so you know, there's some things I know right now. I'm not at liberty to share, but I can tell you that the from the south side of Siversk down to Marinka. It's very difficult, and it's not slow down there. It's extremely mm-hmm. active. In fact, I was meeting with the commander. It's interesting you asked this, answer this question. I was meeting, um, was it a commander? We meet with so many people. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, maybe intelligence, whatever. I don't know. A, a, a great hero. And this was his quote. And this has been my, this has been my feeling and my thought on this. And that was, okay. I personally believed that after the election, the war would not slow down, but the war would pick up. That's what he because said? Because that was my opinion. Okay. Yeah. And that's my opinion. Okay. So, you know, today, he was bombarded with missiles. Well, yeah, but he, I have a theory about that one. So, th- what's going on at the EU... Uh, well, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. EU, Jake, Sull- uh, Jake Sullivan, all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I understand. I understand. There's no problem there. Um, and, and you very well could be right, just making a mark. But he said, and I'm referring back to the to the Ukrainian soldier, not of private, saying, you know, I'm just going to tell you, the election's over. And no matter how fake it was, no matter how unreal it was, no matter all the propaganda, he now has the mandate. Yet. And he is coming. Make no mistake about it. He's coming. Tell the people he's coming. Please help us. Please help us. So I've seen so, little bits about Shoigu talking about, um, you know, uh, mobiliz- mobilizing. Uh, mm-hmm. It's and, coming. Yeah. It's coming. They're going to mo- they, They're already mobilizing just like Ukraine is. Ukraine is mobilizing but it's hard to it's it, it's hard to make the statement that okay well a dictator now has freedom well a dictator now has freedom he's in he the 87 percent number of course is manufactured or however it w- sure came it to be it doesn't matter i mean yeah it's manufactured but it's the number mm-hmm. okay so now the dictator takes that number and says I have a mandate. If you go and if I was home right now, not running aid, I would have translated his speech into English because in it, he gave some very telltale signs uh, about how he sees the war going, such as the gray zones, such as uh, Kharkiv will come under our control, such as we're, it doesn't matter now what the West says at all, because now this is our mandate. The people have spoken and the people have, in, I'm basically quoting now, the people have spoken and the people have entrusted me to protect the sovereignty of not only Russia, but our people. Yeah. So and that, that right I, there is alarming. I mean, that's that's <laughs> very alarming. Very Inter- alarming. International Russians across all borders. I mean, that's that's what Hitler uses as his pretext to invade Poland, right? Their Germans the are same, being oppressed by, yeah. by the Poles. The same exact thing. Yeah. So, like we always say, you know, we can't predict it, but it's um other other than where it's been the hottest, really, out of that Kupiansk area. 
um, Krimina, and it's not, not that it's it's not quiet there. The and we just got the report front firsthand from guys there on that zero line. It's stable. Ukraine is controlling the line there. Quote: We're controlling the line, not them. So that's stable. But from Siversk down, so no bueno. I don't want to give advice to Russia, but if I were, I'd say press everything that you can right now before Ukraine gets the ammunition it needs to be able to fight back. Because mm -hmm. once that happens, once they get the ammunition to be able to fight back, it it's a, it changes the calculation significantly. Once the once the artillery shells, which I mean they're two months out, but once that happens, it, it, the landscape shifts significantly. So, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I I don't know that they can press it the way that they would like to press it until they mobilize. And that's going to be another huge patch. I mean, until they, uh, yes. until they further mobilize and that's going to be a huge battle. Like, so, uh, show you talking about, it uh, looks like f another 500,000 or something along these lines. And okay. But that they, they can't come online for many months. It won't be until mid summer before that can happen. And so, uh, the, the, the question is Dr. Gertis, where are we at then? See that that we can't we have to try to extrapolate out a little bit. Yeah. You know, where will the lines be then? And not so much the lines. And and one of the thing one of the reasons I think that people trust our communities um and all and all of our guys working together is A, we do do what we say we're gonna do. We do drop the aid hand to hand and, and you feel that you are, you know, personally a part of it. And we do our best to never miss days or certain days that I, I can't go live. Um, one of those will be tonight due to what we're doing. I, I will not be able to go live. Well, you know, which, last which night, is why we're having this recorded conversation. That's right. right last now, night. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're recorded because not possible. Last night was we took a little chance with that one. We were right there. Don't do that. Your wife won't like that. No, but I'm, we're already gone. Everything's good. and, and uh, But uh, it's okay. Um, but, but we want people to know, we want people to see, we want people to feel that they are a part of it. Not just, you know, well, I'm buying a lottery ticket and I hope my help helps Ukraine. No, you're not buying a lottery ticket. Right. You're investing into your future, into the future of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And you're getting to see through the building of trust that your donation, your gift is getting there. So we continue to do that. Here's my concern. Shells coming, artillery coming. Um, and I believe it will be here. The check shells will be coming June. It's only March. Yeah. Um, F-16s, people keep saying maybe at the earliest July, I'm still holding to September. That's what I, I was hear talking here. about this this morning. The Netherlands are buying, um, uh, artillery, not artillery. It's the wrong term rockets for F-16s now. Cause they're thinking ahead. That's Correct. what we need to be doing. This that, is like, well, it, we've, we've been behind the entire time. Like it, it's very frustrating to watch. You're playing chess with uh, a nation that is known for great chess players, the mm -hmm. nation of Russia. And no matter what your opinion of their tactics no matter what your opinion of, uh, they don't value human life, and it's to the meat grinder, and da 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 da. -da. Do not uh, well, Shoigu. He can't even com say a complete sentence. Where's Garasimov, the guy that gives the announcement? Stupid. Sh uh, Solovyov is crazy. Yeah, we Peskov, underestimate him at our peril. Listen, <laughs> they're thinking ahead. D they've been planning on this for decades and decades and decades. So. We now have to catch up and be thinking in advance. So you make a wonderful point there. Somebody finally thinking ahead. Mm -hmm. And if we do that, Ukraine can get the help. So I'm not only concerned about where the line will be, because remember, every meter we lose is a meter we got to get back. Mm -hmm. And those meters right. are destroyed. So there's nothing to get back. It's gone. Mm -hmm. Bakhmut, guys, is gone. Avdivka is gone. And the East Chasiv Yar is going. It will soon be gone. The eastern side of Konstantinivka is going. I mean, it's building after building after building after building. A hospital, Zhenya was just in a month ago delivering aid, is now leveled to the ground. Gone. One, I mean, this is what we're seeing through our eyes. 
I actually have video of that. I'll be sharing that and uploading it a few days later for safety and all that jazz. But it, it's it's crazy. And I will tell you this. We, we tell the truth here. Um, I have, over the last couple of weeks, I've been here now for three months, and I will have to leave because I legally have to leave the country. Um, but our lawyer here, is, we're, we're working on a different uh, invitation process, and I'm going to get a, a multi-entry different visa set up so I can come and go. Um, which I'll be doing more regularly now, especially with these big projects. But last couple of weeks, to be honest, Dr. Curtis, I've noticed an adjustment in the mor in the morale. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to lie to you people. Um, when we're dropping this aid and we're getting smiles and we're giving you know giving them a cup of coffee when we're dropping them thousands of dollars worth of aid and we we show them the map of the nations that are helping and, and we, we you know i drop dro jokes on them in the russian language and you know they laugh or whatever it's really a morale booster because right now they need it yep. they need it um i don't want to say that they're depressed yeah, but, but I mean, it's shoot. hard when you don't but, have the material. Somebody, I, I read a, an article right. that said uh, Ar artillery builds confidence. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, like, well, what are you going to do when you have nothing to fight with? And so That's... we're waiting until June to get that the 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 first few hundred thousand of those artillery shells from the checks. And mm -hmm. and I mean, this is a this is a very bleak place to be until June. So at least it's, until it, June, and then then it's I, only slightly I, better. I was with a guy yesterday who told me point blank to my face. He says, I take our unit out and we practice. Um, we have multi layers of drone defense, whether it be nets, uh, drone jammers, uh, any type of radar, mm -hmm. even down to shotguns for the last reprieve mm -hmm. as the FPVs are flying in. So we go out, and it's called the polygon. That's what their ranges are called. And we go out and we practice with the shotgun. Like for us, it would be like skeet shooting. Mm -hmm. You know, Americans love skeet shooting, and Europeans. And um, and he goes, we practice. He goes, but Greg, let me tell you the truth. I only have one shell per soldier, one yeah. shotgun shell for practice. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ralph, you get one shot. Okay, Johnny, one shot. Okay, Fred, one shot. Okay, come on. I mean, that's yeah. not real, guys. Yeah. But this is what they're facing right now. Right. And um, it, it is, I'm not saying they're depressed, but we are sure making a smile when we run these front lines, letting them know that there are people still standing with them and hopefully soon nations, nations get to where they need to be. Yeah. Okay, so I don't want to take too much of your time, but uh, thank you for uh, all that insight. Tell me more about a little bit more about drones. And what I'm reading is that there's now a drone alliance uh, that's forming to that, like Ukraine was talking about. They're going to have a million drones. Uh, now I'm not talking about little FPVs over the uh, uh, you know the, in the trenches. They're going to have a million drones, like like hitting oil refinery kind of drones. So there's mm -hmm. now a, an alliance of nations that are are uh, creating a drone alliance of, and they're trying to get to two million drones. I think that's going to be devastating. I mean, if they can get that up and running and hit the right kinds of targets, it'll at least tell me if I'm wrong. At least have to pull require Russia to pull uh, our air defense back to protect certain places. Like Engels didn't get hit because they had air defense, but you can't do that with every refinery. You can't do that one one hundred percent. I would venture to say, my own opinion, that those types of activities are even much more important than the Freedom Russia Brigade crossing the border mm -hmm. and wreaking a little havoc at a village. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, Belgorod is not falling. If you think that, I have oceanfront property to sell you yeah. in Denver. Yeah, okay? and then there are people there, that are just hopeful that something is happening. I know. And I, and I it, get it, that, but you got to deal with facts. Facts are... When Ukraine is taking out critical infrastructure, it's more crippling yeah. than us making some TikTok videos that we've pushed into this little village across the border. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I understand it, but the reality is uh, you are 1 million percent right. That is the best thing we can be doing, keeping the pressure off 
on the backside, you know, on the enemies, on the invaders territory. Additionally, I can tell you last night I was having a conversation with with a soldier and I asked him point blank. I said, is this warfare changing day by day to more of a drone warfare versus yeah. even artillery? Yeah. He says, are you kidding me? He goes, well, first of all, Greg, we do not have any artillery. So all we have is drones. So now with that, so mm -hmm. you fight with you fight with the weapons that you have. The Russians have people and they, they're not afraid to spend the people. So the Ukrainians who don't have the same advantage in people <laughs> have to be clever about it and have to use these drones. So they're they're they've been using drones in conjunction with artillery where the Russians would just shoot up dumb artillery hoping, you know, spray and pray, right? And so yeah, that's and been really interesting to see. I, I haven't really figured out yet. And so I was talking to a guy in a military surplus store the other day um, mm -hmm. who, you know, he had some background. He was in the Navy and uh, we we're talking about drones. And I haven't figured out if drones are the new tank or the new, I don't know, flamethrower or paraglider. Because his, his case was once you get to a place where you have laser weapons that can knock out drones really effectively it'll take drones off the battlefield or or remove that but we're not there yet but in the Genia. meantime drones are the big menace like tanks in world war ii and so mm -hmm. as we look to the next war i don't know if drones are going to be the same big menace or whether they will be uh technologically knocked off the battlefield like a flamethrower is really not that useful compared to other other weapons and and with that i was reading just this morning about drones so there are drones that are autonomous that can go kill other drones that they're working on developing now. But that's, I mean, that's, we're talking Terminator. Like <laughs> We're talking like, cyber warfare. Yeah. We're, we're also talking, and this brings me, okay. So this brings me to two points that I, I want to make. Uh, number one, you were talking about the Ukrainians having to be careful due to their limitation on soldiers yep. and they're using combinations of drone and artillery. That is correct. This is why back to the batteries and the antennas that we're providing, these guys are valuing their life and, and they know they're limited. So mm -hmm. they're going the extra mile to stay alive not risking the extractions, not risking the rotations. Okay, yeah. stay 12 more hours. The weather is going to change. We can come out safely. So that's point one. But point two, you're talking about this. So yeah, like flamethrowers, when they came out, uh, changed the, 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 the scene of warfare, especially you go back to like Vietnam and the flamethrowers in the jungle and all of this stuff. Okay. Zhenya, we're riding down the road today. And Zhenya uh, said this. He goes, think about when... AI gets involved with drone warfare. Yeah, that's going to be... What's going to happen then? Of yeah. course, we don't know the answer, but all of this is... What we're seeing right now is, uh, for sure, uh, the new weapons of warfare is drone warfare, and it's not just these FPVs and these little Mavics, guys. We're talking about some serious drones flying around that, that many guys here, unless you're really into this, you have no idea what's flying in the air right over here to my right. Right. I'm telling you, it's not just your little drone that's off the off the uh, shelf at, at Walmart. There's some serious, serious, serious drones over here. I'm talking drones that can lift people, okay? And it's serious stuff. What's going to happen in six months? What's going to happen in a year? Nobody can tell, but for sure, warfare has changed um, through this war. In fact, one other thing Jania was saying, we were riding around today because we were talking about this. We ride hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kilometers and every day. And he said, you know, this is really, I think we were riding through Konstantinivka actually. And he says, we we're looking at the destruction. And he says, you know, this war right here is basically all of the 20th century wars wrapped up into one. Yeah, it's really plus, plus modern warfare, trench warfare, mm -hmm. chemical warfare, uh, heavy bombing warfare missile warfare mm -hmm. and now a guerrilla warfare drg activity and now modern warfare with these drones it's all here guys in yeah. this war and it's 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 hellacious so that's all I i'm gonna say you, you mentioned ai i was talking about this in class last night but the two big the two mammoth changes in our lifetime have been the fall of the soviet union and the internet and i i think on the technological side, not the geopolitical side, the the internet has been such a, a robust change. AI has the potential to be bigger than the internet.
Now, the internet will in uh, you know project AI, but it has the potential mm -hmm. to be even like like we're going to have an epistemological crisis about what is true because we're going to have so much AI things that we can't distinguish between what's true and what's false. It's going to be a real like mind shift. Um, and when AI gets involved in warfare, wow! I mean, look out! <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, that that's the concern. You know, I'm not an AI expert. I do see some things, you know, that are beneficial for it. I also see some things that are very scary about it. Um, I I was reading an article even today about how through AI and, and uh, I don't know what the word is for when computers are doing their thing, algorithms or whatever, but like Google's definitions are changing mm -hmm. via AI. Yeah. Like, and the example was the word bloodbath, bloodbath that Trump used. Mm -hmm. And on X date on Google definitions, it meant this. And then on today, it meant this. And the definitions wow. were changing through artificial intelligence. You can look it up. It's pretty interesting. And now if I go, okay, well, if these drones can go in the air, let's say that, Forget the little FPVs. These Shahids now, of which Russia now has with jet engines on them that are silent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And not just the propeller ones. And they have the ability to kind of think their way around the map. Yeah. We're going <laughs> to. Yeah. Just, just think about the, the propaganda side, how much AI can affect it. I mean, let alone anything else, any um you know battlefield applications it's just going to be something significant so anyway yeah we'll see that's why we do it one day at a time what i can tell you what we're doing right now is we're doing the maximum we can do to be together as people of the world it doesn't matter if you're a reagan republican or you're a joe biden democrat or you're a, 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 a maga or you're uh, uh from timbuktu the southern tip of south america red yellow white and black Religious, non-religious, we don't care. What we right. care is we're all focused on standing together, right. helping Ukraine, and getting that aid right to the front where, as a global community with so many different backgrounds, we can all, on this one thing, say we're together, period. Easy. Yeah, that's right. I mean, let's focus mm -hmm. on what unites us rather than what divides us. and, and 100%. And that's especially important right now when our, our governments can't figure out, well, you know, how to get their acts together. So, um, yeah, you know, keep I will, contacting I will your politicians. Tell you this. But I will tell you this. The Ukrainians are watching. Yeah, that's right. The, the soldiers, they're not oblivious to it. They're not oblivious. They, they see it and they'll say, Greg, how's America? And I'll say uh, chaos, house in Russian, house. It's chaos. And they go, okay, that's that's what I'm seeing, chaos. I said, yeah. They go, well, we have chaos here too. I said, well, the whole world's got chaos right now. Yeah. But what we can do is do what we can do, stand right. together and be a good example. And I will tell you this, Dr. Gertis, so many people, like my, my email inbox is overwhelmed now, like crazy. And I tell people on the streams, and I'll tell people right now, if you've emailed or messaged, I, I, I'll do my best to get back to you as quick as I can. It's just so many. And it's only me. I don't have a secretary here doing emails. And I want to personally respond. But 99.99% .99 of the emails are so wonderful mm -hmm. from different backgrounds, different political views, different countries, even different languages. And I translate them where they've written me in their language and they know I'll use a translator to translate it. And they just say, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you to Dr. Gertis. Thank you to Johnny. Thank you to Rick. Thank you to everybody out there that's doing this because I, and this is the quote I hear all the time. What you guys are doing is restoring my faith in humanity. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That message over and over and over. So I say the same thing. Thank you to everybody out there. We are making a huge difference. I promise yeah, you. Co cooperate to graduate. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and finish and finish Dr. Gertis's homework without using AI. I'm yeah, telling you, I'm, don't don't use that AI. He'll get that's you. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. He's a smart <laughs> guy, even if he doesn't have the sweater vest on right now, but he's smart. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. So, hey, thanks nothing. for taking the, yeah. thanks for taking the time to fill us in, and that was a great conversation. That thank you, doctor. I think a lot of people need to hear about like what's coming down the pike and mm-hmm. and where things are. We we didn't talk about just one thing. Uh, as weather changes, well, what happens as we move forward into from cold into summer? Do we hit a muddy seat? The muddy season yeah. in the fall, right? But there's also well, there's a, a muddy there the is a muddy season in the fall, but there's a muddy season now. Um, quite a bit of it's muddy right now. In fact, uh-huh. Jane, Jane and I had some really dirty shoes the other day and, and got some carpet dirty that we shouldn't have. And uh, it's, we just beg for forgiveness. So, yeah, heavy mud. What you have to remember about the mud here, guys, is when you've seen Ukrainian soil. Um, and I know we're all from different places. If you're watching today and you're down in Africa, you know, your soil is that red, dry dirt. If you're in the central Virginia area, it's that red clay red dirt. Clay mud. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's right. Uh, that's what, you know, I know that's where I grew up and played in the, in the, in the dirt. Um, it, you know, you, you may be down on the South Carolina coast and you're really sandy, whatever it may be here. When you have looked at Ukrainian soil and you go, my goodness, that is the blackest dirt mm-hmm. I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. It really is. It's so fertile. This is why Ukraine was bread called basket. the breadbasket of the right. Soviet Union, and it's really the breadbasket of the world, if we want to be honest. So much stuff is grown here and exported. It's it's a key component to global economy and to global f- uh, f- food supply. Um, that's a, another phase of this war we do not talk about much anymore. We did early on in the war with the grain. But when this black dirt gets wet, it turns into molasses. Mm. and tar that's the best way i can describe it but it it dries quickly okay it dries quickly so from now going into spring and into summer it will dry quickly so this is not the heavy mud season Mm -hmm. but there will be a mud and of course then it depends on the weather patterns right now we're dealing with freezing nights still Uh And then it's getting fairly warmer in the days, uh, 8, 10, 11, 12 Celsius, uh, about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. But you can still hit those, you know, zeros, minus one, minus twos, 32, 30, 28 Fahrenheit. So you get that freeze and then that thaw uh, right now cycle every day, which makes it muddy just by the cycle. But another month or so will be dry. We'll be okay, dry. so so we got about a month of bad traction, uh, mm-hmm. which should help retard massive movement forward for the Russians. Yes. Well, the other thing is, if you look at the map right now, Russia, if they want to keep coming uh, westward, which they do, they're going to also have some um, natural terrain issues to deal with, and okay. that's like the, uh, the rivers. Mm -hmm. So here in eastern Ukraine, where we're at right now, there's actually quite a few important rivers that they'll have to traverse and have to deal with the rivers. And additionally, the terrain here is not flat. You have a lot of hilly terrain, a lot of forest, and it's not easy. So this is why I go back to what we started with. Up on the northeastern side, the lines are stable. Mm -hmm. But once you get below... uh, Siversk and Chasivyar, and then you keep going south quickly, the terrain changes very fast, and it goes to flat, it goes to huge acreage and hectares of farmland, Mm -hmm. little villages sprinkled here and there, mostly along the river bottoms, and it's easier down there to move, whether it's Ukraine moving or Russia moving. Up here, much more challenging. And south, the south is the same, except, of course, you have the big uh Nipro River. But the right. terrain is is uh much more open. All right. So I I we've gone longer than we actually anticipated. I'll I'll let you go because I know you have to get wherever you got to you're trying to get to. Um I'm not gonna say where or anything, uh but mm-hmm. okay. Thank you. Uh any other thoughts that you want to leave behind or I just no my, my final thought is as always just thank you everybody. I, I'm I'm um I'm so I don't, I'm trying to, I want to make sure I choose the right word in English. Um, I'm so honored that I have the um, possibility to be your hands and your feet and your eyes and your ears. Jania sitting to my left is the same. It's an 
honor for us that Dr. Gertis yourself and and Johnny and Rick and Starsky and uh, Warthog and uh, Mercado and Dick Dawson from the Shields that you guys would risk your communities to say, I think these guys are legit. Let's gather together and work together for a greater good. And together we can accomplish much more um, than we could ever accomplish individually. So I want to say it's an honor for us to be able to place into the soldiers' hands, into people's lives, civilians' lives, um, the wonderful gifts, love, and care that the global community has provided. When's your next uh, that, when's your next drop video going to drop? Um, I think the next drop video will I, I may be able to upload it tonight once we shut down. It wouldn't be live, but um yeah. I've got a really special one. Um the first lady Jane and I ever helped, little granny, and the bombs were going off, and I told her I would never forget her. And um I was able to fill her pantry. We were able to fill her pantry again. Mm -hmm. And it's extremely special to see the joy. So may maybe rolling that up for everybody to see. Mm -hmm. um, maybe our next live can be maybe tomorrow for sure. Not tonight. Uh, we're definitely not in a position for that tonight. Yeah. Um, but um, we're, we're safe. We're good. We just have to take care of ourselves when we're certain places and going live is not an option. Um, but we thank yeah. you. And finally, the last thing I would say is, guys, in about 10 days, we've moved our project to $188,000. You're hearing it here first. It was one seventy seven last night on my channel. But tonight on Dr. Gertis, it's one eighty eight. Keep pushing. Keep believing. And like I said, we blow through that. We're just going to expand the project. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Stay safe and we'll see you on your channel tomorrow or tonight. Yes, sir. Thank Later you. Tonight, thank right? you. Yeah. It's possible. Right. Thank you, Doctor. All right. Have a good one.